In 2021, Adidas let its designers go absolutely insane. It took its most successful running franchise, the Boston, and completely redesigned it. It took the best racing shoe of 2020 and completely redesigned that too. And the craziest shoe of them all for 2021 from Adidas is the Adidas Prime X. This shoe is just absolutely bonkers in every imaginable way. Has Adidas completely lost their mind? Or is this just crazy enough to work? Time to lace up the Prime X and take them for a run. Sixteen point zero four miles, seven minutes, fifty seven seconds per mile, one hundred and sixty beats per minute on average for today on a very hot and humid run along the lakefront here in Chicago. For today's workout, I had a warm up, two times two mile intervals at marathon effort and then three times one mile repeats at threshold effort totaling 16 miles for the day. I had some very long recoveries in there, but just wanted to get a lot of time on feet and a lot of time at working efforts for my first run in the Adidas Adios Prime X. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe after just this first run, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased myself. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Adidas Prime X. First, let's go over some specs. The specs are just absolutely bonkers on this shoe. First of all, it's a 50 millimeter stack height shoe. Yes, 50 millimeters of stack height in the heel, which means that it's not even legal for any road races, at least for road races that are governed by world athletics. I think for the most of us that are out there that are going into our neighborhood local marathons or even that are going to world major marathons but are just non elite regular runners, no one's checking our shoes. But it is peculiar that they would come out with a 50 millimeter stack height shoe, which is abnormally tall and a 10 millimeter drop. So in the forefoot, you've got 40 millimeters of stack height. I don't think I've ever seen a shoe with 40 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. Now, in this stack height is mostly Light Strike Pro Foam, which is that fantastic foam we saw last year in the Adios Pro version one, and I absolutely love that. And there's so much more of it in this Prime X, but it's not the only thing that's in this midsole. We've also got a carbon plate or a half carbon plate in the heel of the shoe, which I think is gonna be there mainly for some stability to kind of help try and wrangle all of that stack height on this super foam. And there's also in the forefoot energy rods that are in there similar to what we saw in the Adios Pro version one and also that we saw this year in the Boston 10 as well. They're metatarsal rods that line up with the toes of your foot so that way you can get better spring and propulsion and also impact absorption, all those things in a way that lines up well with your toes but is also kind of like disarticulated so that way it can help with stability at the same time. On the outsole of the shoe, we've got continental rubber, which we saw also in the Adios Pro last year, but last year in the Adios Pro, we just had like a slick layer of thin rubber. This year, we've got some treads on this shoe, as well as a bunch of cutouts, giving a lot more space uh, in the arch here and also on the sides. These cutouts also make these energy rods uh, a lot more visible as well. So you get to see the rods as part of the design of this shoe. And on the Prime X, there's even three cutouts. I'm not sure what we're looking at here with this little gold inset. I don't know if the energy rods here that are black that we could see in kind of the arch of the foot then get kind of painted or if there's a sticker that's, I'm not sure why it's gold there or if there's another, surface in there. There's no plate in the forefront of the shoe, so I'm not sure what that would be, but it's gold in the inset of these shoes as well. I'm just gonna call those speed holes and assume that they make the shoe run faster. Moving to the upper, we've got Cellar Mesh again, but this year we've got Cellar Mesh 2.0, a strong yet see-through material 
in this shoe, very lightweight, and also provides a lot of structure without being too snug on the foot. There's an absolutely minusculely minimal tongue, as minimal as you can get, more minimal than I ever thought a tongue could ever be. In fact, it's hard to really show it to you guys here, but there are like scallops cut into the side of the tongue here. So this tongue doesn't even cover like the space in between uh, the two sides of the upper over here. You could see your sock as you put your foot in here because there's just space and then it comes up to a very thin tongue at the top which provides a little bit more coverage for that part that's going to be touching on like that front part of the ankle around back there's no structure in the back of this heel it's just that cellar mesh uh, and no bumper pads at all there's just like a little bit of kind of suede ish type of feeling fabric that's on here there's a little bit of padding on the outside so some just decorative pads that are on the outside of the heel cut back here and a little notch for the achilles but to help with some of the structure in the heel we have what adidas is calling a sling launch heel which is this extra layer of material that kind of goes kind of if, imagine it starts from like under the arch of the foot and wraps around on top of the heel to provide a little bit of lockdown without having any rigidity that's back here in the heel. All told, when I measured this shoe myself, it came in at a weight of 9.6 ounces or 272 grams. So what is it to like to run in a shoe that is as crazy looking on paper and visually as Primax? Well, it is unlike any shoe that I've ever run in before. I think the closest shoe that I can compare it to is the Alpha Fly, and that's probably where I'll be making a lot of comparisons when I'm talking about this shoe. What I'm feeling primarily in this and why it reminds me so much of the Alpha Fly is this forefoot area is very like bulbous. It's almost kind of like a big circle or a big like landing pad that you're landing on. And this forefoot area ended up being really cushioned and very bouncy walking around warming up even when I was starting to get it into speed I just felt like there was a lot going on in the forefoot like this part of the shoe you're definitely feeling a lot of cushion now it's not like super squishy soft it's not compressing like the zoom air pockets plus the zoom x that's in the alpha fly so you're not getting a very like big amount of travel but i'm feeling a similar or an analogous amount of cushion and i'm definitely feeling a lot of impact absorption if you're looking for a shoe with road feel this is absolutely not the shoe for you if on the other hand you don't want to feel a single pebble that's on a road you just want to be able to run hard and not feel any road impact at all the 40 millimeters of stack height in the front of the Adidas Prime X is a shoe that you should definitely be looking at. Now, if part of the workout for the long run for today, I had some marathon effort miles and some threshold miles. First, let's talk about the marathon effort miles. I felt like this is where the shoe does the best given kind of its dimensions, its size, its weight, and all the dynamics of what's going on with all different components that are in this shoe. So with this shoe, when I'm getting up to marathon pace, I'm I'm landing mostly in the forefoot and I'm getting a nice sense of compression of those energy rods and I'm getting some compression from the Light Strike Pro. As I'm pushing off, everything that's compressed releases and I'm getting a nice pop as I'm moving forward. So it's a very pleasant sensation, a really easy to just get to that marathon effort, lock in and keep going. It feels really effortless, a lot of fun to be able to run in it. If you're looking for a shoe that's gonna be nice and soft, but also feel very fast, then the Primex is gonna be for you. I'd say the best way that I can describe this shoe at Marathon Effort is to take the Adios Pro and the Alpha Flat and kind of like mix them together and make it a little bit taller. That's where I feel like the dynamics of this shoe lie. I definitely felt the narrowness of this midfoot though. I felt like for me at that marathon effort, uh, my foot, the natural tendency, uh, especially at marathon effort or slower, is that my right foot, both of my feet do it, but my right foot does it a little bit more, tends to kick out just a little bit. So it's not a perfectly like straight heel to toe kind of like motion. It's a little bit kicked out, a little bit like of a duck walk. And I felt like what that does is it made my slight pronation even more exacerbated if I wasn't being careful and mindful about it. And there were times where this narrow midfoot felt like 
kind of like here's the bottom of the shoe and here's like my mid foot. I felt like it was kind of like falling over the side of the shoe. I don't think it actually was, but I kind of felt that because I just felt it kind of in my arch and it felt like my foot was like kind of crashing in or like leaking over the side of the shoe because there just wasn't enough space in the midfoot. I just, I feel like they were a little bit too aggressive in terms of what they've shaved off. I just felt like there wasn't enough in that arch area of the shoe. As far as the toe box goes though, there's plenty of room in there. So for a shoe that you're gonna be running at kind of race pace, where there's marathon or half marathon, I felt like for a shoe that can handle those speeds well, there was ample room in the toe box. So I didn't feel like I was getting any crunched toes at all. So a very refreshing change, something that you normally don't see for shoes that perform at this kind of level. On the way back from the run today, that's when I started doing some mile repeats at threshold effort. And that's where things started to get a little less great for the shoe. At threshold, the weight and like the size and dimension of the shoe really started to shine through. I feel like there's a little bit more of a higher level of skill required to be able to run in this shoe well for a long period of time. And for me, someone who's not quite as skilled, I felt like it took a lot of mental effort to kind of remind myself, here are the things that tend to happen when I get tired. I have to avoid those things. Here are the mechanics that I should be looking for. Make sure I'm getting a better butt kick, incorporating more of the hammy, a little bit of a clawback. When I'm trying to run at threshold pace, I had to constantly remind myself to do those things in order for me to kind of feel like I was getting the most out of this shoe. When I could get the most out of this shoe, I felt like it was a great threshold effort shoe, despite the fact that it is so heavy and it is so clunky just because it is such a big shoe. There's just so much shoe and material here to deal with. But in terms of being able to handle the impact of threshold paces, this shoe's got plenty of Light Strike Pro midsole foam. The thing that it didn't handle well at all was any type of turning like sharp turns you basically have to slow down to a jog before you hit that curve and i know the cellar mesh material from last year's audios pro i know it can handle those speeds and cornering at speed but i just think combining just the absolute the height of this shoe and this stack height that 50 millimeters in the heel and combining that with the turn it just it, it was a very scary situation trying to take sharp turns and even slight turns just like little bends that the lakefront path would take i found myself slowing down quite a bit because i felt like my foot was sliding all over the place i was worried that i was going to take a turn and then rather than stepping on the light strike pro i would be stepping directly on like the cellar mesh it's just because i just felt like i was just all over over the place with how tall this shoe is. So I'm not sure that I would bring this shoe for a race that had any kind of switchbacks or sharp turns in it because you're just gonna lose all momentum either preparing for that turn or because when you're in the turn, you're just not gonna be able to handle it at a, a very fast pace. This is probably the first shoe that I'm gonna look to use all of the lace holes in here. I might have to resort to a runner's knot. I just felt like the back of my heel was not secure enough in this shoe. This sling launch heel that's in the back here is not doing a good enough job. I really felt like this is a shoe where I wish that I had like a strap that I could put around the shoe to keep me in it because I just felt like I was wobbling all over the place in this when I was moving at some of those threshold speeds. I felt it to an extent at marathon effort too, but it really started to rear its ugly head once I was moving a lot faster and trying to push off from it a little bit harder than I was at marathon paces. So that being said, what is this shoe for? If you're not technically supposed to be racing in it, what are you supposed to be doing in it? I think that for runs like today, your weekend long run, I think that that's where this shoe does really well. The only thing being like, you gotta be careful if there's gonna be a lot of turns because you're gonna want to really be careful about your ankles in this shoe. I'm not sure who I would really recommend this shoe for. I think that it's really gonna be one of the shoes that if you are an absolute like, distance running, road running enthusiast, and you just love to try all sorts of new, new and weird and different shoes, then it's a shoe that you should absolutely try. It's intriguing, it's fun, it's exhilarating, it's frightening, all of those things. A really fun shoe to run in overall. But is this a shoe that I think that a lot of people should be getting and putting into the rotation? No, absolutely not. It's not gonna be for most people out there. 
I'm gonna be running more in this shoe because I did have a good time in it. So if you have any questions about the Adidas Prime X, put them in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you about it down there or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to be able to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, what's going on?